has a lot of similarities. It's, it's a patchwork of voices, um, uh, also sort of based on a documentary type of text. Can all of you talk a little bit about the narrative or structure that you've built for this? Because um, unlike, let's say, a book where you can just, you have chapters or, or profiles, here we want to create a story. So how, how does that work here within the musical? Well, I will say we, when we first looked at uh, the material, there was a question of whether this should just be a musical review and just a series of songs. And having uh, spent the last five years trying to make the show working work, um, you uh, understand that without a continuing character, it's a major uphill battle to keep mm -hmm. people involved and invested and continually build uh, the tension and dramatic um, stakes of a, of a show. Uh, and so I lobbied hard for bringing in um, a central character, uh, and that was where Charles came in. Um, and Abby and I first sat down at her dining room table and talked about her experiences and tried to come up with a very loose outline because a blank page is probably the most terrifying thing <laughs> to hand someone. So at least we were able to say, here's a great outline, now fly, make it your own. Um, and uh, that's, that sort of became our, our goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we thought of this idea, since on one hand we have all these different voices of these prominent Jewish people, uh, I, th I thought maybe uh, with them that, that uh, if we had some kind of continuing narrative that so so I invented a a character uh, that has a, a couple of Abby's experiences but but very it's loosely. very loosely. I wasn't interesting enough. And so <laughs> and and so it's this fictional character who's talking to the audience about her to this her her life and where it uh, she's brought up and completely very um, really a, sort of agnostic and then as what role do, does uh, d uh, ethnic identity play in um, in her life as we sort of s her, she, she kind of flashes back over her previous 40 years. So it, it, it's been interesting because originally Gordon, you know, uh, got me, I, I think I was drunk, <laughs> and he uh, said, said, all you need to do, we just want like, uh, you know, a couple little funny monologues, and of course it never does that, <laughs> and it's turned rather complicated, but, but it's, uh, it, it's just been very in interesting um, challenge to see how much book is there in this review, and you know, and, uh, and we keep finding it, and what exactly are we saying? And you know, it's um, it, it keeps evolving, mm -hmm. you're, you're and because the mix changes every time there's a new song, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's another flavor in there. We're just getting it together for this uh, this reading was so invaluable f to see, uh, and we got this really fantastic cast, and, and, and shaping it around them at, at for this just coming to here in Philadelphia. Um, we've, so we're, let's cut that, change the surround, flip it, throw all, you know, what I, I love, it's kind of almost my favorite thing in the world. I, you know, I'd never worked with Gordon before, and you know, you know the jury was still out, kind of, <laughs> and, uh, but the other, last week, it just, we had the most fun. We kind of ran through it once, and, and then Gordon had a whole bunch of new ideas, and we just, in 20 minutes, threw all the cards in the air and, and <laughs> rearranged the whole thing. And it's so much better, and I had just the best time, and, and just thought, oh I, oh, I like this Gordon Greenberg. We're kind of fun. <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, it was just That's sort of the fun part of, of a musical, and mm -hmm. the challenge, too, but the Rubik's Cube of it all, and, and yeah. sort of just changing all the colors. Oh, it would look better for me, this whole thing red. Okay. Um, the problem is then you have to teach the whole cast and the music director and the copyist and the orchestration. Yeah. Um, but we've got a, a really agile group that yeah, kind of roll with it. Can you say a little bit more along those lines about how, how does collaboration work among the, th the three of you? Are, you? are you sitting together doing this or are you going off separately and, and, and working? How, how's the process Well, I'll place? just start by saying that I actually took a really big step back and I'm a control freak New Yorker, as my family knows, so that wasn't easy for me. But uh, the, these two are so talented, their reputa reputations precede them. And I also knew as the author of the book that this was going to be a different um, at piece, mm -hmm. that they were launching from something that I did as a journalist and something I obviously feel strongly about, but it, now it had to take a different shape. Mm -hmm. And so that has been really interesting, and because I feel like I'm in good hands, I'm <laughs> trying to keep my mouth shut, although sometimes Gordon and Charles are like, Stop talking, stop whispering. <laughs> so it's, but, it's, but that has been a step, I think, because you write, you write the book that's the foundation, and then you realize it's got to grow into something really, really different and separate. Yeah. But then it was interesting, 
couple of weeks ago, uh, or, or actually a month or so ago, um, I was sort of having trouble I, trouble with it, and, and then I, I thought there, there, are, there is a certain element of, um, of Adam in this character. And, and then I, I just asked you, would you just just write just write down your random thoughts on these various subjects for me and, and uh, email it to me? And she just wrote the most beautifully articulate feelings about, about just very personal things about faith and, and her experiences. And, and, and some of it I just t took verbatim Thank and you. just put it in. And, and I think it's uh, really beautiful. Thank you. So, so you, you kind of go float in, and in and out of uh, involvement. Usefulness. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> it's exploitation. But she's also, I should say, this is a rare situation because not only is she the author of the book, but she's a musical theater person um, who was in Merrily, we roll on, one of the most all-time all famous Flops. Flops. <laughs> but filled with genius. Um, and, and is a, a, a noted commentator on that. So mm -hmm. it's not like she doesn't also, once she takes a step back, she's, she's able to actually comment on this as a musical now. Charles, can you say a little bit more about your work as a librettist? Um, because I think it's sometimes it's a, it's a title or role that I think mystifies some people in terms of what it is that the librettist is, is doing. Do, are you writing insert song here? What, what, what happens when well, you're... This is a very different situation because it's, mm -hmm. it's not a book musical. Mm -hmm. you know, and and um, it, what's, what we, we're trying to figure out is, uh, you know, it's, uh, on one hand, sort of, kind of two separate shows. In a certain sense, it's, there's this play of this fictional lady that we keep v revisiting, and then there are these, uh, ice, these standalone interviews with these well-known people. Um, but we did, we early on have discovered that, that they, they need to be more, more connected, and, and we we're finding more and more connections to, to that. So my role is quite, it's really, it's quite different, I, I don't, I, and we're still figuring it out. You know, in a, in a book musical, you, traditional book musical, the, the um, Book writer really does provide a, a whole context for the numbers and and uh, uh, and, and different collaborations are, uh, go out in different ways. I know I've read that Terrence McNally um, will just write write the play mm -hmm. and just overwrite it, and then the, um, the composers and lyricists come in and just t take what they want to musicalize yeah. and, and and do that. And I think there are other people who write in a. Uh, Places where oh, this would be the, the song that would be right. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it, it varies. And with this, it's it's different because it's uh, we're, we're trying to figure out how much how much do we really need to connect her to the specific song or or not? Because you can get too on the nose about it and be kind of hokey. Mm -hmm. You know, at the same time, an audience does like to be guided. Mm -hmm. And I would just add that what did happen to me in doing this book is that talking to all these famous people affected my personal choices in terms of my faith or religion or identity. And that was totally unexpected. I didn't expect mm -hmm. to feel more Jewish after interviewing a lot of Jews who actually have, are very disconnected from their Judaism. But I think that this character, who is separate from the celebrities, um, does in that sense represent what a lot of people feel, whether they're Jewish or not, which is that you're having your own kind of experience, but you're also watching how public figures experience that same identity. Mm -hmm. Can you say, without maybe tipping the hat too much, because um, we want it to be a little bit of a surprise, but can you say a little bit um, about what we're going to see tonight and say maybe what, this is still a work in progress. So what have been some of the challenges that you're still maybe grappling with at this, at this point? It's really that, that in a standard musical, you essentially you write the play, or at least that's, yeah. that's how I've done it, and you either put in insert song here or you put the, the parameters for the song, what you want it to achieve, and in this case, it's sort of, we, we keep taking one baby step forward with the book, so Charles takes, <laughs> goes on, on faith and takes a step forward, but the, the song places don't necessarily fit the songs that exist. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll take the songs and sort of start adjusting the book to it, and it's sort of one foot and then the next. And, and the question is, of course, is, do, you know, um, is it necessary for the, so the song to absolutely reflect what she's just the experience that mm -hmm. she's just had, mm -hmm. or uh, in a sense, certain sense, it's more just that uh, by her interviewing 
by us knowing that she's interviewing these famous people and we see these vignettes about, about them that we can just take that leap that, oh, this is what she's gaining from them without it being specifically, she talks about, you know, her son's bris and somebody writes a bris number. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, <laughs> so it's just, it's is there a bris number tonight? <laughs> no, no. Not yet. Maybe we'll discover we need one. <laughs> You know, this Paging pa Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> <laughs> this panel tonight is in part about, um, it's, uh, I think it was called Creating the, the, a New American Musical um, and looking at the, the, the challenges and the rewards of doing that um, uh, to, uh, from all sort of different angles, p performers and directors and writers, you've all been part of working in musicals. What's your current feeling about the, the landscape or the environment of creating a new musical today? Is it... Is it, is it welcoming? I is think it's great. I don't think it's ever been better. There's Glee, High School Musical. It's very much a part of popular culture in mm -hmm. a way it wasn't 15, 20 That's years true. ago. People get that it makes financial sense to write musicals now more than it used to. Not always on Broadway. I mean, Broadway's got its own economics, and Broadway's definitely become a part of the tourist landscape in New York. So it's... It's got that, and then there's celebrity plays, and there, there's certain niches that fit. But I think... Generally, as a person who loves musicals and writes musicals, there are a lot of applications for it on uh, television, for Disney, for... I mean, I'm, the things that I'm working on are in so many different mediums, and I feel fortunate that those avenues even exist. Mm -hmm. So that's from my perspective. Mm -hmm. That said, I also think people are open to new forms. Like the Yentl we just did was literally just a klezmer rock band on stage singing songs that reflected the inner life of the characters, but none of the characters actually sang. Mm -hmm. We used it like a movie soundtrack. So it was just a new way of doing it to make the, make the show feel juicy and exciting, but not necessarily singing your emotions to each other. Mm -hmm. The, we're, I believe it or not, we're actually almost just out of time. So I have sort of one final question. Um, this is my indulgent question. Have you guys been watching Smash? Yes. Yes. How many of you have been watching Smash? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. So I'm asking this question because, you know, the show purports to be, you know, the real life behind the scenes of what goes on making a Broadway musical. What's your assessment of the show? Is it, is it, is it on the nose no. or, or no? No. no. I, or is I, mean, it I love it. I'm watching it with my daughter religiously. But I just, I feel like... I mean, I was in one Broadway show, and I was lucky enough, and it was, it was a, a full-scale disaster at the end of the day, <laughs> but it was watching Stephen Sondheim and Hal Prince really wrestle um, with amazing music, um, a difficult script, but I just never saw the backstabbing that's in them. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm loving it. We weren't involved with Spider-Man. I don't know the only Broadway show I, I, uh, musical I was involved in was, was a, one of the big flops of the, the previous decade, Taboo, and that was really notorious. And, oh, it was, and, I, and I did think at one point, wow, I, I could just write such a wonderful <laughs> memoir about you know, these crazy wild characters, you know, Rosie O'Donnell and Boy George, and I mean, it, it was just, you just couldn't believe the, the drama going on. And I, I really could have written such a fantastic You should. Work, but then nobody would ever trust you again. That's you true. Know, you know, it could be the end of your career. Why would anybody want the spy to, you know, to be working for them? So, you know, and, I, and I wouldn't want to, you know, um, hurt some of these people who I who was very fond of. But the goal of Smash is to be a good TV show. Right. I don't yeah. think their goal is to bring verisimilitude to the masses. I think they're looking to create good characters. and not as kind of hokey, though. You think yeah. they could be a little better. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's why we have panels like this to show you what really goes on behind the hokey. And on that note, we're going to end. Thank so you. thank you so much thank for you. discussing. And